Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions, striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. The question I'm answering today on this video is what's in the box in regards to this behemoth of a game. Look at how huge this is. This is barely going to fit on my desk. This is Weather Machine, the latest Vital Lacerda heavy Euro game with fantastically designed artwork and graphics from Ian O'Toole, which is a board game ma match made in heaven. Those are my, like one of my favorite designers with one of my favorite artists. They work so well together. Uh, this is published by Eagle Griffin Games. Now this is one that I have to thank my podcast co-host Sean for picking up for us for Christmas. So no review copy here. This one's ours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack open the shrink and you get to see what's in this box at the same time I do for the first time because I haven't seen inside a weather machine yet. All right, so here we have the box for weather machine. Um, <laughs> I can't even like show you the sides very well because it's so dang big. I need a bigger desk to be able to unbox this game. So not a lot to see on the side, just the name of the game. It's got that kind of classic uh, bookcase look. Um, what's probably more interesting is the back, but I'm going to put it this way here. You can kind of see what we're going to get, but we're about to dive inside this box. And I think seeing the components instead of a picture is going to be cooler. So I'm going to flip it this way. So one thing I will note right away that I love, oh, that came off nice, is finger holes, like finger things to be able to lift stuff up. All right, here's cool. You get $5 off on any order of $30 or more at evilgriffin.com. Not evil, eagle, eagle griffin, eaglegriffin.com. Uh, so here you go. Anyone could probably use that. Showing off their latest stuff. I have not played. Oh, there. I, no, that's Fleet the Dice game. I, I have. Okay, for sale. I'm like, I haven't played any of these. On Mars is something on my wish list. Um, yeah, Eagle Griffin catalog. I'm going to keep that out. Okay, this has a smell. We got that smell and spiel going on here. There is a definite new game cardboard smell coming off of this. All right, rather thick, very white rule book. Text is rather small, like that's lower than 12 point font. That's gonna be a little rough on my eyes. Two to four players, great component breakdown here. We're just gonna flip through this quickly. Oh, look at that setup page. Sorry, it just, some, some publishers, designer and artist combos just make nice looking stuff. This looks very clear. Got this all nice and broken out. It's not even digital. Like, these are pictures of actual game components that they've added little graphics to to show things. That's so much better than just seeing everyone's, uh, you know, 3D mock-up or tabletop simulator mods um, showing in here. Looks like a dense game. <laughs> dense game. It is a worker placement game, engine building game, point salad from what I understand. You're moving scientists around trying to help out this dude right here who's invented a weather machine and it didn't go so good the first time. He was able to fix the weather where he was, but it started causing disasters around the world. You are now playing his assistants working on his second prototype. Lativ? Lativ seems to be his name. You're going to use like steampunk mechs to do work and stuff. You're going to run experiments. End of the round. This book looks great. Um, dense though. Like we're all, there's, these are variants. We're 22 pages, 22 pages for like a non, you know, no leveling up, no campaign rules, just a solid chunk of Euro right here. Oh, that's cool. Is this how to put everything away? I don't even know. I'm assuming. Yeah. Insert guide. I always appreciate this. That's nice to find. Nice to find that 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 is a nice to have, and I, I hate getting a game and then I got to go to like Board Game Geek to be able to uh, look it up. Oh, this reminds me of um, Vinhos had these little player aids that are actual little books, which again just a, a note to the complexity of this game. There's a booklet for the player aid, a significant booklet, and there should be one of these for each player. Two, three, four. Yep. So we have that. Then we have the saboteurs. This might be the solo play. Yeah, Solitaire Rules, of course, by Daniel Zerke. So we have a set of Solitaire Rules. I'm just going to really quickly flip these open. Oh, there's a lot in there, too. That's another. We're looking at uh, 15 pages just for the Solitaire Rules. 
And then we have the upgrade pack. So this is the Kickstarter version that does have some of the Kickstarter upgrades. So be aware that some of this may not be in the retail version. This is a list of what was in here, but like, I don't think the stuff's gonna be marked as I go through it. So we start with some cardboard right on top. That is thick. That is nice, thick card. I appreciate that. Nice, thick card. Oh, look at that. That punch so nice. That was so satisfying. Toss that up as a TikTok oddly satisfying video right there. Nice. So we have our various different tokens, um, the stocks, the tokens that go on the side for your, your upgrades, flip them to show they've been used. Um, these look like alternative things to put on the board to change things up. I'm not sure exactly what these are. Oh, again, look at this. But like no taggies, nothing. There's, there's no edge on this at all. Man, that's nicely cut. Really nicely cut. The only reason I'm trying to put this somewhat back in is to fit it back in the box later. That's a, this is a section of the player board that summarizes everything. Maybe the player board's made up of different parts. Okay. That is the player board. And I've got to say, I love two layer player boards, but the problem is they always seem to show up warped. Look at that. No warping at all. Seems like the technology is finally at a level where they're not going to warp. But like you should be able to see the two layers there. Like you got two layers here to place your bots. You've got for, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Um, certificates or whatever. You've got your, your books are going to go here, your thing. So when you publish books, it goes there. Technically I've got this upside down. I guess I should flip it. Um, your research is going to go here. Those tokens I had out earlier that I first punched go on this side. That is a really nice player board. Uh, looks like they were very cognizant of color blindness just by player colors like orange and purple is usually a good sign. And then different colors here, not using greens and reds. So it should be four of these player boards, which there are. Man, that's even a big player board. This is going to take up a lot of table space. Like just the player boards are as big as some board game boards I've seen. We have an interesting block of foam to keep everything organized. So then we have the machine parts. The other various upgrades that would fill in. So like these are going to go into these spots on the player board. Um, the gears, though, are going to go on to your, your warehouse is the section that's going to build out. And there's a spot for one gear in it. So we have all the gears here. Uh, should be two-sided, but not all that interesting on the other side. These just show if they've been spent, if they've been used. These are the tiles for actually building out that warehouse. So you build outwards. Um, these, if I remember, are endgame scoring. So two-sided, but only in the fact that you shuffle them. Uh, this deck's going to be built up based on randomly. So like the ones are going to go on top of the twos, are going to go on top of the threes, then flip. Then we have the disasters. This is terrible weather that's happening in other parts of the world. Again, nice thick tiles. Nice, clear, really clear iconography for when you're trying to sort the cards. I love it. That's Ian O'Toole at his best right there. Really easy to see because they're going to start with the level one up and then it can go to level two and three, but so easy to tell apart. Okay, we do still have a board, so I'm not sure what these are. This might be the bonus content. And we do have a very pink pinkish skin colored box insert oh man look at all that stuff okay we're gonna get to that in a second i'm gonna open up the board yeah check out that board that that is a massive board and then there's something a little different on the other side i'm trying to get this all in the camera it's actually difficult and then on the other side, I don't know if this is for solo play or just artwork, but it sure looks like there's spots to put stuff. Here's the other side of the board. So the other side of the board for weather machine. All right. So just to kind of show off the, the great looking uh, iconography and stuff on here, again, I've got it upside down. You've got your um, track at the bottom for scoring victory points, dude's office, I love the art work here all of the icons which you know off the top of my head don't make a lot of sense but i'm sure once you know the game just kind of this was uh, one of the tracks you're gonna have so on thick board so we can go through what's in the actual insert here which i apologize for the glare that'll probably get fixed by taking this off
So these come out. That is awesome. Check it out. So you can put them out on the table. I love it. I love it. Spots for everything. We got all kinds of pieces here. Just to double check. No, nothing underneath this part. We got the Nobel Prize here. And uh, everything's wood and silk screened. Okay, there are so many bits here. I'm just going to put them back in. So what we have are the different books and the three different columns for different types of weather. And there should be a whole bunch of these. So they're kind of going to repeat. So what I'll do is I'll open these up and I'm just going to put them back in where I got them. So this shows one of the weather types that you'd be doing research on, which is why it looks like books. And then there's three different places you can earn these on the main board. There's three different sections. So that's why you get the three different colors. Um, it's a little harder to see in the camera than I would have liked, but this pink and green aren't as similar as they look. Though from the front, they're not super easy to differentiate, but like on the table, they'd stick out more. So we're going to find multiples of those for each different weather type, right? So here's snow, and you have the same thing. You've got the three different colors for snow. You've got the three different colors for it looks like wind. And I am gonna stop doing those particular ones because you've got the same thing for water and so on. And then you got the same thing here for like sunny or heat. Uh, these are prizes you can win. So similar, they go into the same spot on the player board. Might as well take those out. So you have your prize tokens. Toss those in there. And you know what I'm gonna grab is a player board here just so you can kind of see. So like store your prize here. Look at that, doesn't slide around. And eventually you're gonna move it over here and prizes work as wild cards. But like there, I can basically stand that up and it doesn't fall out. That's awesome. And well, here's some of the other ones, right? So this track, we're researching snow. Again, I'm not going to bother with all of those. Uh, this one, I don't actually know off the top of my head what this one's for, but it obviously goes in the same area, same spot. Same spot on your player board shows like a book on top. Maybe that's for once you publish books. Again, I have not actually played this game. I just did some research into what the various components were, so I knew what I was talking about. And then some extras. Yeah, it's it's more of the same ones for whatever reason. So more of those two types. Okay, we're gonna put all these. Okay, I'm probably driving people who like things straight and organized bonkers by not having this. <laughs> straight and organized and stuff being kind of all over the place. Okay, so Kickstarter upgrade, of course. This is the Nobel Prize replacement. So what I don't know what I'm gonna do is, oh, that is so nice and heavy and it's signed. Well, it's not, not signed, like it's etched. That's really cool. Vitalis Erda and Eno Tool. So this would replace this piece. I don't know what to do with this. I'd probably give it to my kids to play with. For now, it's staying in the box. Maybe that'll actually sit on top, but then I doubt the lid will fit. What do we got? We had so much here. So, okay. So these are playing pieces for this particular player color. Which I don't know where they're supposed to go in here. So we're going to look at the purple playing pieces. And then I'll leave the other three colors in here. So one of the things you get are bots. Little tiny steam-powered bots that are your kind of part of your workers you're going to send out to do things. You get a bunch of those. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve bots, and then your scientist. So this is your main worker placement piece you're gonna place around. Now with that, so those are in also in orange, yellow, and black. And obviously where I have these now is gonna get shifted up because this is obviously a spot to hold cards. For now, we're going to keep him in here. Now, here is the professor himself, whose name I already forgot. So here we have our friend, the professor. We're helping out. We are all his assistants. He has his own bots that are in his unique color. And then he has his own personal assistant, which is a nice, cool looking robot. These are nice and silk screened, really nice looking pieces. So I'm going to throw those in there. 
Then we have more pieces in player colors. So we have two sizes of hexagons. These are for tracking both player order and initiative. So the big hexagon tracks player order. This goes on the initiative track, which is something you can manipulate to change player order. Again, these are player components. I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna toss them in here. They're gonna go in here. Then we have the same thing in the other player colors. I'm not gonna bother opening that. These are award badges to track your merit. Again, it's in all three player colors. And they don't have any silk screening, but they, you know, they look like a, an award, a badge. <laughs> going where it's going. I'm glad it comes with that sheet to show you where everything goes. So here we have uh, the, the, the um, scoring markers and then some locks for areas that are covered up that you can't use. Again, everything's wood silk screened. We have another set, like just another extra set of books and bots. Again, I'm not sure why there's extras of things. Maybe just in case you lose something. I'm gonna keep that sealed. This one's actually got a label on it. Replacement government markers. Okay. I don't know if, that, if that's, that's potentially an upgrade. Maybe the government markers are normally cardboard. They don't want to be opened. So here are the government markers with the severe weather symbol on the top. Again, spare pieces. I know what those are. Discs for tracking um, your your basically your wealth during the game. Again, these are going to go on the player boards in these areas to track up and down what your your various resources are. These I honestly have no idea. These might be a Kickstarter. You've got a man in a trench coat and you've got someone reading a newspaper. No clue on these two. Cool looking bits though. These are your chemicals that you're gonna use to run your experiments. These are actually gonna go into your lab as you build it up. So you have chemicals, again, colorblind friendly as well as having symbols on top. So, you know, you have radiation, uh, it looks like explosives and so on. Again, not seeing a great plot for these. These are for the disasters. Tracking those, again, in different player colors. Horrible weather happening across the world. I'm gonna throw a bunch in there and then I can kind of hold these up. So the trench coat and newspaper are for the solo mode. I am sure there's better places to put all these. Uh, influence tokens that go on various tracks. Again, in the player colors, taller. Um, what I like is everything is actually physically different, which would probably help even more with people with vision problems. So I think that's it. Uh, again, what I didn't open here is it looks like these are some extra just in case they get damaged pieces. Um, I didn't open up all the player colors for all the different bits. So that's a lot of different pieces of wood, most of which are silk screened, which is awesome. Like just the little details on the bots. Really like that. Not sure what's going to happen with this piece for now or where any of this stuff goes, but that's not what we're worried about here. What I am going to do next is go through the cards, which again, I think are for the solo play. Which, of course, I can't open, so we'll just... So, there we have them. Bunch of different cards. With various backs. So, you know what I will do? And we'll sort them by back. I will say already, I like the card quality. Just feeling them. They feel like nice cards. Nice and thick. Okay, so what we have here shows a bunch of resources. And a power on button, other symbols. Again, iconography. Lots of uh, iconography is key in these kind of games. And, and Ian O'Toole is one of the best. Yeah, I honestly have no idea what these are. Maybe asymmetric starting powers because there's a power button on it. 
These look like some kind of awards. Oh, these are the various tracks. So it's getting to different points on the various tracks is going to give you a reward. So maybe it's some kind of end game goal. Again, iconography looks great. Like honestly, this across the table over there, I can tell what that is. It's all five of the different resources. This one I'm pretty sure is for the automata. So a bunch of these cards were actually from the Kickstarter. So probably aren't in the retail version that were unlocked for various funding goals private objectives. These look similar to these, but they're actually different. Oh, well, they say A and B, so I bet you that that, that might be Automata. Supply cards. This is definitely Solo, because I, I see it's the newspaper person moving to different spots. And the trench coat person moving to different spots. So yeah, lots of cards. With all of the components in Weather Machine, uh, it's going to be fun figuring out what fits where. Um, possibly going to be fun putting the plastic lid back on. Now what I am going to show off here, I think right now, because I'll put them in here, is this is also a Kickstarter bonus. This did not come in the box. These are metal machine parts. So these replace the cardboard machine parts I showed off earlier. So what you have is the machine parts in the different colors. These are not player colored. This is something different. And they're all actually unique gears. So not only are they color coded gears, they're metal for one, um, but each one is actually unique. So not just in color. And you can kind of hear them there. These are like one of the coolest board game components ever. So I am going to toss these. I don't even know. Um, I just stand up. They're going in here for now. And then we'll take the green out. Hopefully they store in the same spot. Now, what I really like is the fact that not only are they color different, the, the physical shape, the composition of these is even different. Maybe they go in here. Who knows? So I'm not going to open all of them. So you can now see like the copper red with the spoke. We're going to put that there for now. Blue with a much wider uh, inner circle and then uh, a four-way, very gear-looking one. Okay. Where did I put the lid thing? Okay, it's down there. So these go on top of here. Looks like a very solid box insert once, we, <laughs> once I actually sort everything in. Look at all that stuff. That is a lot of stuff. That's with the cardboard punch. So then we have a nice cover to go on top here. Then we have the massive board. Goes on top of that. Over here. Then we have the rest of the stuff. So we have player boards here. We've got various booklets. All the punch boards, which I obviously still have to punch. The rules. Oh, we have more books over here I missed. More books and another one, the upgrade pack, which just told me what was in there. Um, some extra cardboard punch outs. And then there was that foam thing, which was in here just to keep everything protected. Oh, these have to go in somewhere. So again, it don't take me not getting this flat as any indication. I'm sure once everything's punched, it all fits in here very nicely stuff and punch the stuff it would all been fine there we got what you get with weather machine oh yeah i don't know about you but seeing all that i'm excited this looks fantastic um you know tool with fatal Lacerda. like come on just the, those two names i want to play everything they do together this looks really good i'm getting some feelings of veen host deluxe kind of reminds me of that especially the iconography the components fantastic the uh combination of wood and metal is really nice. I uh, know, again, Kickstarter exclusives on those metal gears, but I like the fact the workers and everything, everything organics wood. Um, the various chemicals are wood, but then the gears, the metal thing is physically metal. And I, I like that differentiation. That's a, a nice tactile thing that you don't get in many games that'll help increase your immersion a bit, which is something that's not easy to do in a Euro style game. Now this is a heavy beast of the game. I am really looking forward to playing it. Looks like it's extremely well organized. I 
didn't want to take the time to sort out all my bits and have you people watch me do that. But I got to say that insert looks like it's got a spot for everything. Some great um, 5S going on there, right? Some pokey yoke having the right place for everything. And and that is uh, some of the quality background, something I appreciate. Uh, huge box though. This is this one's going to take up some room on my shelf. And man, is it heavy. Like it's, this is, now that the metal piece are in there, it's even worse. That is a heavy game. Uh, do not stack on top of other things and make sure you're using thick shelves if you're using bookcases because that's a heavy one in many ways. Um, looking forward to playing this. Hopefully I'll get it played uh, sometime in the coming weeks. And when I do, I'll be sure to be talking about it on social media where you can find me everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, uh, one word. And we'll also be talking about it on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can download on your podcatcher of choice. And you can find more of our gaming content over at TabletopBellhop.com. One last thing, if you did appreciate this video, it would be awesome if you headed to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and tipped your bellhop. For the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good day and game on.